So if you think of yourself as an artist, take the artist label off of yourself and think of yourself as a creative person. So there is nothing here that cannot be used, right? So I'm looking out in the environment and I'm going, hmm, that wind. Immediately I think of um, those sound harps that use wind to create sound. So the environment all the time, people, equipment, nature, all sensory has its rhythm. And you listen and it will start talking to you. Now, don't ever tell your psychiatrist this, but everything starts to talk to you in its own language and you start to build. It says, use me, use me this way, and you start experimenting. So you see the materials that I have here. This is just a bit of what I do. Obsession is great, but if it's mindless and it goes nowhere, it's not useful. So obsession for me is going out when the wind, like this, has, blow, has created blowdowns or the trees can't take it anymore. So what do they release? their most newest growth. And they don't just release one needle at a time. They let go of whole clumps. And I wait until the wind dies down, put on my sou'wester, my gumboots, and my shopping cart, and I shop nature in the city. And so then nature gives me different colors at different times. And, you, and I work with smell and texture. So you're using full body sensory apparatus. It, visual arts doesn't have to be with the eyes only. Your body, your, your nose has eyes, your hands have eyes. Everything in you is both audience and maker of incredible things. So you experiment and you learn what that um, item is trying to tell you that it can do for you. And it, you will know when you have stopped listening when it starts not being able to do what you are thinking. Then your idea overpowers the material. And so the material tells me what it can do. And when I have that set in my mind, then comes in this other component of my practice, is I give myself a seed, a question, or a challenge, and I go to bed and sleep. And in the sleep is dreaming. And the dreaming comes to me, and I, I, I my own iconographic kind of language, and it tells me what this is and, and how to use it. Now that sounds really airy-fairy, but every major a meditator and person who has self-discipline, whether it be a Qigong practitioner, a ballet dancer, or a yogic experience, those disciplines are what underlie how I work with my materials. So any materials and any subject matter. So things like ordinary paper, you, you go paper, oh no, you can't put paper outside. That's, that's BS. So I, t I talk and I go, okay, what, what, what is needed? What do we need? Paper by itself is like a child without clothing. You don't put your child outside in sub-zero weather, you put clothes on them or whatever. You, know, you, don't, you don't put them in the ocean without giving them a life jacket sort of thing. So, Materials talk to me in that way, and if I'm listening, then they tell me what is needed. So here is kakishibu, the um, fermented green persimmon juice on the paper cradles that you saw in the wish-fulfilling tree last night. So it's like parchment paper, and if it goes through a further process, because kakishibu um, is its own glue, so you can laminate and laminate and laminate, and um, then it becomes, if you really want it to have long-lasting effect, but still keep transcending and transforming, then it goes into shibu, shibugami, which is um, smoking these layers. And the Japanese do it for over a year. Laminate a layer together, coat it with khaki shibu, smoke it in a smoke pit kind of fire, bring it out, do another coat, put it back in until it becomes rigid and absolutely water resistant and insect <coughs> resistant. So someone asked me, so what are you doing with death? I'm building alternative ephemeral memorial and funerary containers. 
The other component is a container is only a container is only a container, but how do you give it meaning? How does meaning become a personal thing for your audience? Then comes the other community engaged outreach. And so then I learn other skills in order to really bring that up to its fullest potential. So that people, when they see an object, they have a personal connection to it. So they can actually make it themselves. You teach them how to do that, but don't override their own creativity. So it's, there's a balancing point with everything that I'm working with, whether it's with people as part of my material or whether it's materials such as this. I talked last night about using glycerin. Um, and this is the challenge. Glycerin is an oil-based petroleum um, product. And what's the problem with petroleum? <laughs> what's the problem with petroleum? Come on. Hands up. Pardon? If the corporations are for us. What else? It's probably the stress thing. How? Is this dissolved? Would you use vegetable glycerin, someone said? No, I tried it. Why wouldn't it work? Yeah. OK, there's one that you can go and, and try out for yourself and, and start doing your research. So your, your materials give you questions, and they give you answers. This is petroleum-based glycerin. It's medicinal glycerin. It's the kind of stuff they use for people who are bedridden for long periods of time and they get bed sores. It's also used in, in cough syrup. So I chose it, medicinal-based um, glycerin, for the purpose of its, its lowest amount of non-toxicity. When I use it, I don't throw it away because it can be reused. Yes, it will get mold growing on it if, it's, if you hold it for a long time, but you just bring it to, boil it up again, and let it settle down. It kills whatever bacteria is in there. The glycerin will still be in there. So then you can use it for treating other materials. So that you don't need to throw it down the drain and pollute the environment. There is no way that humans can exist without having an environmental footprint. It's impossible. But the, what we can do is reduce that, reduce that, reduce that. And in the process of doing that, you are becoming closer and closer to a harmony with nature. So if you think, instead of feeling guilty, think of you are coming in tune with your environment so that you're not feeling like you ought to, but that you want to. And so that's part of what I'm doing, is trying to find more and more ways in which I am more and more in harmony with my environment. <laughs>